Hey, what's up everyone? It's Justin here, and today I've got the comparison for you between the Samsung Galaxy S5 and the Apple iPhone 6. With the recent release of Apple's flagship for 2014, the iPhone 6, we will be putting it up against Samsung's flagship for 2014, which came out back in April. And by moving through each category and putting these devices through the tests, we will see which one ultimately comes out on top, and more importantly, which one is better for you as the consumer. So without further ado, let's get on with this video. So the first thing I would like to talk about is the hardware and right off the bat you'll notice that the iPhone is finally almost up to par in terms of the size to the Samsung Galaxy S5. That is because this time it features a 4.7 inch display while the Samsung Galaxy S5 features a 5.1 inch display with the S5 coming in at 142mm tall and the iPhone 6 at 138.2. And in terms of width, the S5 is still slightly larger at 72.5mm wide compared to the iPhone 6's 67.1mm width. So now taking a look at the back of the devices and the general build quality, the Samsung Galaxy S5 features a removable plastic back, but on the iPhone 6, Apple has once again gone with metal, and you could say that the design is quite the same and different at the same time with the iPhone 6. With Apple kind of moving away from the squared off design and edges of the device, but instead making it thinner, rounder, and more seamless feeling in general. And from first impressions, I actually really enjoy that. On the Samsung Galaxy S5, however, I think it's pretty safe to say that most people aren't a fan of the plastic construction, and for the longest time, we have been waiting for Samsung to kind of move over to the metal build construction, which we have seen with the recent release of the Galaxy Note 4, and we do definitely expect to see that on the next generation of the Galaxy most likely named the Galaxy S6 that is due to come out spring of 2015. On the back, you also notice the camera of the iPhone 6 is located on the top left corner, while on the Samsung Galaxy S5, you have it located in the middle with a heart rate sensor directly below that. Also not to forget to mention, one of the greatest features of the Samsung Galaxy S5 is its IP67 rating, so the device is water resistant up to 1 meter for 30 minutes. But in terms of the general build quality and feel of the device, I definitely have to give it to the iPhone 6 and I'm sure a lot of people will agree with that. When you stack up these devices though, the Samsung Galaxy S5 comes in at 8.1mm thick and the iPhone 6 definitely went on a diet this time around and comes in at 6.9mm, so it does feel quite slippery in the hand at times, so I definitely recommend a case for that. On the bottom of the iPhone 6, you will find your lightning connector as well as the speakers and 3.5mm headphone jack, while on the Samsung Galaxy S5, you will find your micro USB. 3.0 port. On the inside, however, the iPhone 6 is powered by an Apple A8 processor that comes in at 1.4 GHz, is 64-bit, and dual core, as well as the Apple M8 Motion Coprocessor and 1 GB of RAM. It is available in gold, silver, and gray, and comes in a 16, 64, or 128GB configuration that is non-expandable. As for the Samsung Galaxy S5, it is powered by a 2.5GHz quad-core Snapdragon 801 processor with 2 gigs of RAM, with an Adreno 330 GPU, and this comes in a 16 or 32GB configuration in white or black, and it is also microSD expandable up to 128GB. Now moving on to the display, the Samsung Galaxy S5 features a 5.1 inch 1920x1080 resolution full HD 432 ppi pixel density display, while on the iPhone 6 you've got a 4.7 inch 1334x750 326 ppi display, what Apple calls the Retina HD display. I gotta say at first I was pretty disappointed when I heard about the 326 ppi resolution on the iPhone 6 display, but from looking at it I really have no problem with it, everything looks extremely clear, text looks clear, I can't really diminish any pixels, and as in the past, the iPhone's screen representation and color representation is extremely accurate. And although the screen size is 4.7 inches, and that isn't necessarily large compared to Android devices, having iOS running on such a large display makes it feel absolutely massive, and in my opinion, it is the perfect screen size, and I'm extremely happy that Apple has finally increased its size. As for the Samsung Galaxy S5 in the past, the display is extremely sharp at its 432 ppi and what you may notice is that the colors are extremely vibrant and definitely pop out to you. Some people may enjoy that and some people may not. But I gotta say, it definitely adds to the experiences of watching movies and playing games on it as the colors in general, as you can see from this video, just definitely pop out to you. So no matter how you compare the specs, the hardware, and everything about the device, so the biggest differences as always comes down to the software, whether it is iOS 8 or Android 4.4.2 KitKat. 
When comparing Android devices to iPhones, the biggest difference will come down to the software and the user experience, and what exactly you as a user are seeking. iOS being known for its nice simplicity and beautiful user UI, as well as its integration for iPad and Macs in case you own that, while Android is better known for its level of customizability and the ability for the user to kind of take it to the next level in terms of making the device their own. So first we're going to look at the iPhone 6 running iOS 8. So in iOS 8 there were some improvements made, but in general I gotta say visually there weren't that many and a lot of which I haven't actually noticed or used yet. iOS 7 was the big update for Apple. But the first thing you'll obviously notice with the iPhone 6 and its larger display is that it does have a sixth row of icons and the icons in general are spaced out a little bit more and I think that looks so much better. And just sliding up to control center, it will show you your quick toggle settings and your brightness slider and stuff like that that we saw in iOS 7, but there is some small visual changes to that. And going into all of your settings, again, a lot of the things are going to be very familiar, but there are some small changes such as iCloud Drive and also some of the icons for the settings Apple has changed up this time around. On the iPhone 6, by double tapping on the home button and not actually clicking it, it will actually bring the top of the screen down so you can reach it for those who may have the smaller hands and this feature is especially useful on the iPhone 6 Plus and in iOS 8 they have also brought in a health app which is able to take advantage of the M8 Motion Coprocessor to track your steps. Some other great things that iOS 8 had introduced is custom keyboards and also access for developers to use the Touch ID and also many additional features in the Messages app, as well as the Photo Gallery app for those who want to edit their photos and kind of take everything to the next level. So taking a look at the photo editor here, you have the option to change the exposure, contrast, highlights, and just kind of improve your picture and make it exactly the way you want. You are now also able to rotate your images and all of your filters as well as the auto enhance is still there from before. But in general, I gotta say, so far I've been a big fan of iOS 8, especially on the iPhone 6 and its larger display. Extremely smooth and really no stutters noticed so far. On the Samsung Galaxy S5, it is running Android 4.4.2 KitKat with Samsung's TouchWiz UI. And obviously a lot of people aren't the biggest fan of it, since it is a pretty busy UI. Samsung has done a lot to kind of make it their own software. With Samsung, they are known to plague you with a whole bunch of features, and for some people, they actually really like that. And just taking a look at the settings, I really like the way that they have made the icons, the colorful layout, and it makes everything very easy to access. Heading back, you do have kind of the typical home screen that you're able to customize. As you know, on iPhones, you still aren't able to add widgets to the home screen. Instead, it is still in the grid, and here's just a look at the app drawer. Everything does function very smoothly as expected, and to customize your home screen, you can just pinch in from two corners. You have the option to change your widgets, your wallpapers, and also some of the home screen settings. Sliding down from the notification bar, you have your quick toggle settings located along the top, and you are able to customize those and move them around, change them around if you would like. And there's just an option to change around your notification panel. You also have your brightness slider located on the top as well. And from using Samsung's TouchWiz in the past, I have to say that I'm not really a big fan at all. Though it is very snappy, it does bring a lot of features, but I feel that the visual interface and the looks of things could be a little bit better. Now taking a look at the camera app, you will also see a lot of quick toggle settings that you are able to change very easily and also change up the mode. On the Samsung Galaxy S4 though, there was a ton of modes, but in this case there are only a few here and you can download more if you would like. Through the photo gallery, you are also able to edit your photos and they still give you a ton of options like we did see on the iPhone 6 running iOS 8, such as the basic adjustments, the tone, the effect, portrait and decoration in order to kind of add a creative touch to all of your photos. So that was just a look at TouchWiz on the Samsung Galaxy S5 running Android 4.4.2 KitKat and some people are a pretty big fan of the skin but personally it just isn't my cup of tea. And I actually prefer something more like HTC Sense where it has a simpler, cleaner and I would say more visually appealing interface. So now that we have touched base on the hardware and software of these devices, it is time to move on to perhaps the most interesting and exciting part of this comparison, that is the cameras. Smartphone cameras are now a huge part of an everyday consumer's lives as you always have it with you and you will just take out the phone and take a great photo. On the Samsung Galaxy S5, you do have a 16 megapixel camera that is capable of recording 4K video. 
And on the iPhone 6, you do have an 8 megapixel camera capable of recording full HD video. And I have to say, I was pretty surprised when they came out and told us that. Me and myself, I actually completely expected that Apple would actually bump up the megapixel count on the iPhone 6, but I guess we're gonna have to wait another year for that. But despite its low megapixel count, an iPhone cameras over the past few years have been able to get me the most consistent photos from what I have noticed. And I'm just going to give you a quick test now. So now taking a look at some photos taken on the Samsung Galaxy S5, I would say that the photos are pretty much head to head. The iPhone 6 is able to get a little bit of an edge in terms of the brightness and how it's able to expose the photos, but it definitely goes back and forth. The Samsung Galaxy S5, of course, with double the megapixels, is able to capture a little bit of a better detail if you were to zoom into your image. But in terms of the low light image, the iPhone 6 definitely wins by a long shot thanks to its dual tone flash. Now giving you guys a quick look at the video comparison, you'll see that the Samsung Galaxy S5 definitely captures a wider field of view. They were actually taken from the exact same distance. On the iPhone 6, I found that it did expose the color of the leaves a little bit better. You can see the greens pop out a little bit more. But on the Samsung Galaxy S5, you will notice that the detail is absolutely amazing with the 4K video recording capability. So perhaps one of the biggest issues with iPhone users was its battery life, and on the iPhone 5S, I was actually never able to get more than a day. In fact, most of the time the device died just after 2 or 3 o'clock. So with the iPhone 6, it definitely had some very high expectations that Apple would step up and improve the battery life of this device. And I gotta say, although the change is small, I have noticed an improvement already. The iPhone 6 features an 1810 hour non-removable battery, while the Samsung Galaxy S5 features a 2800 milliamp hour removable battery that can be swapped out at any time. And from using the Samsung Galaxy S5, I'm normally able to get more than one day if not halfway through the second day, while with the iPhone 6, I have only had it for about a day, but the battery life has definitely stood its ground, and be sure to keep your eyes open for my review while I will touch base more on that. So before we head out of here, I would like to cover one last thing, and that is the benchmark scores. And normally the benchmark scores don't really reflect much, even if you are comparing Android devices, but in this case, it is even more different since we are comparing it with an uh, iPhone. Especially because of the fact that the iPhone has never really been a winner on the spec sheet, but it is very well software optimized to still give you a great flagship performance. Through Geekbench, on a single core score, we were able to get 1595, and that kind of reflects on the fact that it is dual core, but the cores are extremely powerful as you can see. While on the multi-core score, the iPhone 6 edged the S5, coming in at a score of 2851 compared to 2765. When it came to the graphics benchmark 3D Mark, the Samsung Galaxy S5 came out on top at a score of 18,678 compared to 17,328 on the iPhone 6. Moving on to the browser test, using the default browser on the Samsung Galaxy S5 and Safari on the iPhone 6, the S5 came out with a score of 399 and the iPhone 6 came out with a score of 358. The lower the score, the better. And that has just been a comparison of the Apple iPhone 6 and the Samsung Galaxy S5. The Samsung Galaxy S5 brings in some great features such as the heart rate sensor located on the back, a removable large battery, and a beautiful 16 megapixel camera, as well as its ability to expand over a micro SD card, and of course its IP67 rating will definitely give you peace of mind if anything. While the iPhone 6 now features a beautiful, larger 4.7 inch display and Apple's new streamlined curved design with the rounded edges on the screen and the device in general feels so much thinner and lighter in the hand, I'll have to conclude by saying that these two devices are suited towards different types of consumers. Personally, I will be using the iPhone 6 as my daily driver as I have been using iPhone for quite a few years now and I pretty much own every Apple device out there and take advantage of the iCloud. But that being said, I also love a lot of things about Android, and I actually own 8 Android phone, and I'm always eager to try out Android phones as they come out, as you will see on my channel. But the most important thing in the end of the day is which one is right for you, and I definitely recommend you to head down to a store and kind of try out the user experiences and the different feature trade-offs between these two devices, and ultimately decide which one is better for you. But as always, there will be a lot of talk of these devices throughout the year of 2014 through to mid-2015 as they go head to head in the flagship smartphone market worldwide. But aside from that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you did, be sure to hit that like button and let me know which device you plan on picking up or already have and I'll see you all in the next video.